Hey guys, what's up, Chris here, and welcome to another very exciting video. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak comes out tomorrow. Thanks to Capcom, my team and I got the game a little bit earlier, and we already played way too much. Well, no more showers for me when I'm playing this game. <laughs> so big thanks to Capcom for this opportunity to be able to create high quality content for you guys early. So after over 100 hours of playtime, Dales and I have collected the 10 most important things about Sunbreak we wish we had known from the very beginning. Before we begin, don't worry, this video will only show monsters that have already been officially announced by Capcom. Number 1. Fast Travel via Buddy Recon The first thing I wish I knew was how to get access to the new Fast Travel feature. This little thing here is called a Buddy Recon. Once discovered, you can go back to the village and talk to the Meowcenary Cat to deploy one of your buddies in the location you just discovered. There are two recon spots on each map, but only one of them can be used at the same time. You can select which one to use in the buddy recon menu at the Meowcenary Cat. They even added two buddy recon spots for each one of the old Rise maps. The trade-off is that you can only fast travel there once during each quest. It will also cost 100 Kamura points, but that's not a lot. This adds fantastic new options to get to the monsters faster and it's especially nice for us speedrunners, so our videos are even shorter and make even less ad revenue. That's why this video is sponsored by Kingdom Maker. This free-to-play medieval fantasy game combines real-time strategy, RPG and simulation gameplay elements to build your own massive empire. Form and train your own troops, turn them into fully customizable armies to lead them into battle to conquer new territories. As you expand your empire, you can spectate battles in real time or join them in its unique PvP multiplayer mode. But Kingdom Maker also introduces an immersive social system built around it. I was extremely surprised by how customizable the character creator is. You get to design your own avatar, this is my bride actually, and then our kid literally looks like a combination of my character and my wife. That's super funny. The game doesn't take itself too seriously and I love that. With a unique art style and even seasonal changes, Kingdom Maker combines all. Research, trading, combat, dungeon exploration interacting with other players and more. You can use our QR code on the screen or our link in the video description to download Kingdom Maker for free on either iOS or Android. You're gonna have a great time with it, so a huge thanks to Kingdom Maker for sponsoring our video. Number 2. Hidden Camp in the Jungle and Citadel Buddy Recon is not the only way to fast travel. The second thing I wish I knew was that there are actually two new secret subcams in Sunbreak. One in the jungle and one in the citadel. Only this time, they are super hard to find. It took us until the end game to discover these locations. We thought Buddy Recon was the only way to fast travel on these two new maps. The camp in the jungle is right below these roots. You just have to jump down the cliff and wirebuck into the opening in the wall. And on the citadel map, the camp can be discovered all the way up north in the icy region. These two camps will help you a lot to get to your target monster faster. Number 3. Follower Quests and the Royal Order Weapons Some of the coolest weapon designs aren't unlocked by beating new monsters, but by completing optional content, specifically called Follower Quests. These are quest lines which are separate from the main story. NPCs from Elgato will join you on these Follower Quests and assist you during the hunt. Completing these quests unlocks the Royal Order weapon tree and really cool armor designs from characters of Elgato. You definitely don't want to miss out on those during your playthrough. Most of these weapons tend to have really good sharpness. Deus is actually using the greatsword from this weapon tree a lot. Number 4. Bleeding With Sunbreak, an old abnormal status effect of the Monster Hunter series returned, the bleeding. Back in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, we used to eat Mosswine Jerky. Another typical way of removing the effect was to crouch for a certain amount of time. These were the only two methods that I knew when I played Sunbreak. Now, since Elgato Jerky doesn't exist, I found myself crouching to remove bleeding, which was really bad. In Sunbreak, to remove it, you can also eat several items. Well done steaks, rare steaks, gourmet fish, sushi fish and immunizers. Or, like the tutorial menu of Sunbreak suggests, you can just wait for the effect to wear off. Literally. As you die, it's not like there are monsters chasing you or anything. Just wait. Number 5. The best para and sleep buddy weapons. 
The buddies you bring with you on a quest are not only important to gather materials for you or help you navigate around the map faster, you will also see many experienced players give them status weapons, which is a huge support during hunts. Palamutes and Palicos can almost always paralyze or sleep a monster at least once during a hunt. So naturally, you want to know how to get the best sleep or para weapons for your buddies. These three are the regularly craftable para and sleep weapons in Mastering. But if you use your mercenaries and send them on a quest, they can find flounce jelly and heavy humble scrap. These materials are quite rare and will unlock these two weapons at the smithy, which are the best status weapons for your buddies in the game. We found flounce jelly by sending the mercenaries to locations with a fish icon. Number 6. Gold and Ruby Wirebugs There are gold and ruby wirebugs scattered all around the maps. You can find them on both old and new maps and they are really helpful. Collecting a ruby wirebug will increase the damage of the finisher at the end of a Viren riding. The golden ones are even better. They will make it so that monsters drop more materials from Viren riding attacks. With these, you will get even more shinies on the ground. Number 7. Kuit Nest in Elgado I personally found that one right at the start, but my teammates did not until after beating the final boss. So tip number 7 is the new Kuhut Nest location, which is on top of the command post. You can wirebug there pretty easily. Every few quests or so, the nest will be refilled and you can get some insane items there. Number 8. Wall Banging Starburst Bugs This endemic life that's camping on the walls is called Starburst Bugs. When launching a monster into them, they do extra damage, and a lot of damage. Some of them can even inflict blights. Did you know that when a monster hits these starburst bugs with an elemental attack, they will absorb the blight of the element they got attacked with? Then, once you launch a monster into them, they will inflict that blight onto the monster. That's a pretty cool little detail. Honestly, what's that name? Starburst bugs. Say that three times in a really fast. Starbucks, 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 Starbucks. It's like Starbucks. Why is it Starbucks? Number 9. Defense Boost in Master Rank. Master Rank monsters hit harder than ever before in Rise, so we found ourselves making good use of our single slots by using defense decorations. There are barely any useful skills for single slots, so the added defense boost is a great option to make your life easier in Master Rank. Number 10. Wall running is dangerous. In Sunbreak, you can now easily walk up vertical walls without using wire bugs. In some situations, it does make it easier to traverse through the maps without having to wait for the wire bugs to recharge. But while in combat, this mechanic can be really dangerous. If you're trying to run from a monster attack and aren't realizing that there is a wall or structure nearby, you might accidentally start climbing the wall, which can lead to you carting very quickly. Fortunately, there is an option in the settings menu which turns off automatic climbing. You can even specifically disable it for when you're in combat. This will make your hunting life a lot easier and safer. And that concludes the most important things we wish we had known before playing the game. Thanks to Deus for helping me with this video. If you liked it, consider subscribing. More high quality Sunbreak content is coming soon. There are actually 12 more advanced tips we carefully selected in this video. Be sure to check them out if you haven't already. And with that said, we will catch you in the next one. Peace.